Welcome back everyone to TNO The Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Enrique Takera, lot lover, but uh, the Endless Sea. The flagship rocked back and forth, the rest of the fleet following close behind, the endless ocean surrounding them as far as the naked I could see. Admiral Toscano stared off into the ocean on the bridge of the flagship. He turned to the radio operator working next to him, and he said to the pirates, We haven't seen a trace of them, sir. Uh, the Admiral sighed. The pirates have been elusive by the Navy task force ever since they left port. They hid in the vastness of the sea, using a teacher's eyes to avoid the Navy. And every day that passed was another day the fishermen were stuck at land. He sat back and rubbed his eyes, straight from the constant staring off into the waves. Another problem for him to deal with was the sailors. The constant search with no end in sight was demoralizing. A general feeling of failure was starting to set in. The Scott had been trying to lift the spirits of the men, but the Admiral knew this could only work for so long, eventually. They had become too exhausted to continue, to continue on. They couldn't continue like this much longer. Someone reconsidered reconsidering the plan was needed. I can't work the men with no breaks. Maybe they call in the Air Force. They would probably have to compensate them in some way, but their help would greatly increase their chances of finding the pirates. The Admiral stopped rubbing his eyes and looked up again. He still saw an endless ocean without any interruptions in the water. He still didn't see any signs of the pirates. As the radio operator continued to monitor the conditions of the other ships, the Admiral stood up as he came to the decision. Call a lot. We need some help in finding the pirates. He sighed, grabbed his binoculars to his side, and continued to look out the window. Call a lot. The builders of history. Juscelino Kubitschek turned to face the seating in the lecture hall. The audience, mostly historians by profession, looked at him eagerly, staring him down like a child waiting to receive candy. Kubitschek had come to the Brazilian Historians Conference to speak about the presidency. <clears throat> he gladly accepted, eager to speak with those who would write Brazil's history. The presidency is no easy burden. It requires a certain kind of man, someone willing to assume responsibility for every single person in the country. You have to be able to respond to any situation to any crisis, and you need to have a plan to plan and change your nation, forming into something greater. The former president looked at the sea of faces, looking down at him. Many in the crowd were taking notes, trying to memorize everything Kubitschek had said. Kubitschek's mark, he's make sure they never forget this. Most of you can agree that the great presidents do not simply uphold the status quo. No, they take the reins of the country and drive it forward towards progress. They use their power to leave a better country in the wake. The presidency is not for the weak or the meek. You have to have ambition, a fire burning in your soul to light the way forward. A truly good presidency will reach for the stars and beyond. Kubitschek had now gotten in his groove. He would now send his desired message to everyone that would hear his speech. When I took the mantle of the Brazilian presidency, did I sit around? No, I bought Brasilia. Our former rebuilt a backwards healthcare and issues in education. I swore 50 years of progress in five and I achieved that. I swear from these achievements, these ambitions, my presidency will be remembered as one of the greatest of all time, perhaps even the greatest. The audience was stirred up now, people whispering eagerly to each other. Through my work, I shall go down in history as the greatest president of Brazil. And my next term will hammer this all in the more. And as this crowd erupted, Kubitschek shall seize the day once again. But we're still in an election season, and uh, we're, I think we're doing okay overall. I thought we were doing well. Seize the ships, of course, though. As we're down here. I think I read this one last time, so if you're going to do this one, please go ahead. 48 hour ultimatum. Let's issue the 48-hour ultimatum, given these vultures of choice. They Either they leave Brazilian waters, or they have their ship seized and their workers in prison. But we should be vigilant. If one of these peoples decides to be a good idea to test the ultimatum, and enter waters another time, we should be ready to back up words with force. Absolutely. A request from the Air Force. Uh, else you got? No. the photos here. Lots of eyes widened. Do you, so do you want a bigger budget? The most thing the end, other end of the line crackled life. Yes, Mr. President, we do. The fuel our pilots burn up has punched a big hole in our finances, so we need the money. And will the effects of this prospective budget manifest immediately if you would have more fuel? Well, no, Mr. President. Well, we need more money for repairs. We've got to keep those planes, op planes operational. A lot wins. Repairs? If the planes need repairs from a small arms fire, they were wasting their money. Three options presented themselves immediately. A seed to their demand, strong arm them, or refuse entirely. The latter, a lot, was most urgently attractive. He cursed the beggars on the other end of the line, holding out for spare change while their bullet ridden countrymen drown in the brackish surf, but refused to hardly save lives. Yeah, of course. It's only money, right? A brief discussion of policy. And Dietrich Eckhart, stern traveler, 150 tons, registered out of Luanda, detailed Marshal Odilio Denny. So, Mr. President, that's four since yesterday. It remains to be seen what they do next, but I cannot imagine in Berlin. The door to the President's office opened, and Quadro stuck his head in, asking, Did you tell Toscana to seize the German ships without even telling Germany? <clears throat> yes, Lot said. Negotiations aren't going to go anywhere, and their ships continue to rob us blind. So, naturally, we had to skip to sending the Central Africans a message that they could understand. And now they're knowing, now they know that we aren't messing around. This is bad, Enrique. Are you sure this is the right thing to do? Mullah didn't want to get out of this out of hand either. He just doesn't want to get the Reich into a war with Brazil, and Germany might just be angry enough to not take a hard line against us. Oh, heck, it was always going to end up like this. Everyone who met the Reich's commissar says Mullah is a madman. He can't see us as an equal at the negotiating table, and he doesn't have any interest in avoiding a diplomatic incident. There can be no negotiation with the Reich unless we can show them we are willing to go toe to toe, and this is a wake up call he needs to realize we're serious. <clears throat> Quadra sided over and said, Yeah, I understand your point. If we're negotiating with a real African state, then things would be different, but with the Reich's commissar, I don't think anyone wants to be a German colony, treat a German colony as an equal. Correct, that's that. They're a darn colony. And that's why we take a hard line. And I think a real country would be more respectful anyways. Quadro said, all right, Mr. President, have a nice afternoon. Double standards for savages and civilized. Hey, got some convoys. 
Nice. Campaign's still currently active. How's we doing the 48 hour ultimatum? Now we can do this. Oh, that's good. Pretty much in the lead, not much in the lead here. Um, 38%, 24. We have some comms to go through too, so. Very close behind us there. Three percent. There's no point in even trying that. There's very. It's pretty close to. Oh, we'll come back up here and do this one or this one or this one. Nah, not that one. This one. Nah. Make it. Make sure that we're definitely in the lead there. So, the Germans pacified. Or oh, seagulls. Aircraft carriers in the sea were being deployed. A squad of maritime search planes and naval bombers preparing to fly us off as soon as possible. With the application of the planes, the search for the pirates is expected to go much faster. The planes prepared to sweep the entire ocean in a search. Glad I get to get through a mess of bureaucracy and even talk to the Air Force General, so you need to rectify that, but the issue would so will be resolved later. Another problem that came up for the generals wanted compensation for their uh, uh, help in the search. Well, I'd have been forced to allow a bigger budget to the Air Force. He wished he hadn't to jump through all these hoops to get them to obey the president. But even but now, even though they already had some shady measures to be taken to guarantee their support, the Air Force was involved, and the operation may hopefully get move much quicker, even though that would cost a pretty penny. So engines were revved, and as we all scrapped against tarmac, as flight planes were, plans were drawn in offices, Fuel poured into tanks and bombs and loaded into bomber bays. The ocean-wide search was being prepared. The Brazilian Air Force has been unleashed and it'll scour the skies until the last pirate ship is under the waves. Soaring high above the ocean, seagulls reign supreme. The pirates have almost been totally scattered. It's time to scatter them once for all. Oh. I think I read this one before, but no matter what the course of action we've taken, whether we fight the well-placed words or a good strong deal, seal, we have succeeded in our task. The pirates are mostly defeated and scattered and instances of illegal fishing, though most still significant, have begun to decrease. Most important of all, our fishermen can return to work with the danger to the livelihoods is significantly reduced. Our task force will, of course, patrol the areas for the next few months, but the job will be far easier from here on in. As for us, having caught or killed the smaller members of the food chain, it's now time for us to deal with the big predators. The way to Washington. Well, it took a moment to watch stretch his limbs before exiting the aircraft. It wasn't his first sight of DC, but the long voyage always left him with some fatigue, like me, thankfully. The car ride White House to the White House proved to be a more comfortable experience and gave him some time to overthink his plans. I think about his plans. Our relations with the Americans were good and been since the end of Argus' reign, but the Americans were never a suspicious lot. So President Nixon especially, regardless of the years of healthy trade and official stand, status as an observer in the OFM, Brazil's refusal to completely bend to American wishes and give up its own independent uh, diplomacy ruffled feathers. Brazil and Japan's deal since Kubitschek's presidency left more than a few men in Washington nervous, personally. Lot would take the Yankees over the samurai any day of the week, but it wasn't as though Brazil did not have its own complaints towards masters of the OFM. The naval bases lent to the Americans remained a mostly controversial issue that he would have to address carefully. Maintaining good relations with Americans without sacrificing Brazil's foreign policy would be without its challenges, but Enrique Lott wasn't a man to shirk in the face of adversity. He just hoped that President Nixon was willing to listen. Ah, America, the greatest friend and the worst neighbor one could ask for. Fox tactics. Oh, we got a vote for more. Uh, what do we want? Over here? 31? That's pretty close. Pretty close to losing it. Let's have a solid lead, why not? Ademar stepped onto the campaign bus, staffers flowing around it, preparing flyers, leaflets, and equipment for the dozens of caravassers. Uh, canvassers. Canvassers. Campaigners and officials that were traveling with Admiral. When the Guanabara Senate election was essential, with the countless donors and minor politicians would see the PSP as a prop party that could win elections, even give his next presidential election a need a boost from investment. Admiral briefly sat down. It was 4 p.m. and he'd been campaigning since 6 a.m. in the morning. He led the campaign in the rush of the energy and excitement he got when he heard cheers at rallies and countless supporters chanting his name, but working for that long did, it, did take the win out of him. As he said, he felt the campaign bus move and moving it onto another location the dozens already canvassed. As he took a hot dog from a passing staff, he was smirked. Campaign bus was a relatively new phenomenon in Brazilian politics, and he was glad he was able to use personal connections with automobile manufacturers in Sao Paulo to acquire many buses for affordable prices. The opposition parties have been surprised by Adamer's innovation. Supplying the PSP candidates with nationwide with these buses to fight within the election, it would be enough to, in many races, but Adamer hoped that in Guanabara, it would give him the edge to succeed. Not just a brash bull, but a cunning fox as well. Nice. Well, at least for him. Neptism, we're doing okay here. Uh, Money-wise, we're doing okay. We're doing decently. Growth is very good. Incredibly good for growth. A forced premature retirement. Plinio Salgado stared blankly at the city of Lisbon through the window of his office. Oh, In front of his eyes, they what his ancestors built. A magnificent, or magnific, proof of what his king could do. A large, organized Christian city with its Catholic and African heritage or being shown at every corner from a beautiful square to occasional bakery. I wish the Brazilian capital was like that, not the disgusting communist influence Brazilia. Since someone may be an American agent or a manipulator from the Brazilian liberals connected to him to Lacerda's little plot in 1955, he had been exiled. He remembered every single note he wrote for every single officer asking them not to cooperate with that American plot, and this is what he got. I sat down to prepare a speech to the Cultural Association of Brazilian Immigrants that he thought about his homeland. A place contaminated by the same influences who not traded face Portugal, left-wing feminists, sodomites, teenager bands, and worst of all, pornographic magazines who corrupted the youth. 
He was frowned at his mouth, thinking of all the evil being mass produced and flooded in Brazil, while his party stayed under the unsure command of Real. Salgado finished the speech, and while I was walking through the park, Walked through a park on the way, he saw an Afro Iberian couple. What a stunning size of uh, Luso Tropicalinus glory. The clear proof of the moral superiority of the barbaric Yankees with their segregation. He wanted to return with the sport of Salazar, Franco, and some friendly people back home. He, th he thought he could do it. As he gave bread to the fish, and the like, he could only remember one thing, or think about one thing. How he would fix the problem back home. A lot in Nixon's day out. President a lot. It's an honor and pleasure to meet you, Nixon smiles, charming in that handshake firm, but his eyes told a different story. He knew a man on the watch for danger when he saw one of the President of the United States radiated suspicion and unease. The wide variety of cameras and journalists observing their every move during the conversation didn't help. So a lot smiled back and kept up the strong showing for their audience. The conversation between the two is primarily over a continued friendship between the nations before evolving into a discussion of the broader relations of Latin America. It's my most sincere hope that, uh, through the combined efforts and policies of the United States and Brazil, we can safeguard the ideas of liberty and equality across all of Americas. Nixon announced at one point with a broad smile pointing towards the cameras, we are, after all, stronger together than apart. Well, I knew where this was going. Nixon was trying to get lot to make a public commitment to American politics. Our policies, and it occurred to him that he could turn this against his counterpart. The more American a skeptic members of the PSD and PTB have been grumbling for him for months to take a stand on Brazil's independence when it came to foreign policy and challenge Americans on something, perhaps. Uh, this could be a splendid opportunity to address the issue of Brazil's least bases in the North and request Americans pay more while showing off to his supporters. Of course, trying to get ahead of the compa his companion in front of the press would have consequences. For the PSD. I'm glad you mentioned equality. I'd like to discuss some unequal dealings. I'll go that one right now. And we're here too. Got some comments too. Like, as, as a Brazilian, I like this video. Oh, thank you. Undeveloped, huh? Lightly developed. I can add some more, 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 more. Downside international showboating. The process paid by the Brazilian people to lease a naval base to the U.S. has not been equal for some time. If we're two nations to maintain a united front and show the continents of the world that we are free and equal, we should first make sure that we are in equal in agreements. Lot knew he had made a mistake, almost as soon as his words left his mouth. He feel the air become tenser and see Nixon's face shift slightly away from the welcoming and accessible expression of one of irritation. The discussion took a turn for the worse after that, of course. They made civil, but the air friendly talks between the two allies have been broken. Fortunately for them both, it wasn't long until they took a break to meet with their respective teams. As aides assured him that what he did was very brave when he pressed back at home on the home front, but Lot knew it was a hollow victory. He should have acted more with more tact and more sense. This visit was supposed to be about friendship between their nations. You can imagine about the house and said it would be amused by his little stump. Hopefully he could show the Americans he was so supportive of them against Germany. If he couldn't, then this was already shaping up to be the worst in his vice president's visit to, to, to Japan. Yeah, oh well. They still need us. Hopefully. Uh oh. What happened here? Nothing happened here. That's right. Cause for a struggle. The applause hailed a lot as he strode forward to make a speech. The American House and Senate gathered to be bestowed a visit from a foreign leader, great honor, and not one given lightly. There was someone that displayed the respect and friendship between America and Brazil. When the sound at last ceased, a lot inhaled a long breath and began. Twenty years ago, the world was in chaos. Empires built on autocracy and hate marched forth to conquer and ravage any that would not bend to their wills. There, the United States and Brazil first fought alongside each other in the name of liberty. We cannot prevent the tragedies that claim millions of lives, we could stop them um, from happening again, and so we did together. We stood firm against the tide of fascism and protected the ideas of democracy and freedom across Latin America. Even now, Brazil has found herself on the front line of this crusade. The Third Reich's colonial budget is not content with the pillaging of Africa, but reach out into our sovereign shores uh, to steal the livelihood of our innocence. We've seen where the elk leads and will not bow before their tyranny. To the United States, I say this, in a world where the ideas of inherent rights and liberty for every man, woman, and child are suppressed by parasitic overlords across entire continents, America's inspiration for someone better. The God in life shows us that we're all more than a cogs in a dictator scheme. It's protective of those that cannot save themselves. It is proof not just for Brazil, but not just for Latin America, but for all mankind that we can be free. We can choose how we live and who leads us, free to express ourselves and believe in whatever we can choose to, free from the shackles of tyranny or the butcher's cleaver, free to be prosperous without them saving another fellow man. And we, if we can, if we in any K, if we in can stay this course, uh, if we can all endure all that enemies of liberty can throw at us, if we can remain righteous and fair in our conduct, then I believe the United States and Brazil can set the world back onto the road of peace and prosperity for all. Thank you. Applause drowned out his words, world for a second time, and lost chest swelled with pride, and made the torch literally burn ever brought him full from here on out. So it says, we're going to Brazil. So it says, does Brazil have full focus right now? I think Lot does, but I don't think anyone else does. That's why we're playing as Lot this time, too. 40 hour ultimatum, we're still detaining vessels, said Admiral Toscano. Three, day, three today, Ooh. five yesterday, and that's the ones we got. There's almost certainly the ones that made it through that we just still don't know about. And the B-17s are still tracking trawlers through towards us. If there's a warning, they aren't heading for it. So either they don't have the re or they're ignoring us because the ambassador says it's in the Volkischer Bullerbachter lot said. I'm thinking Muller has decided to play chicken with us. 
Mr. President, said Marshal Denny's, the detention operation is still feasible this moment. Our ships are still capable of defending the coast, and we're willing to stay out there as long as we need them to. If we want to keep us up, we certainly should up the, end up detaining the entire German fishing fleet in the Bay of All Saints. We could, but that's not going to get us the results we need, man. It's been told me Germany could retaliate in some way with their ships being detained by us. They'll most, they'll most likely claim some sort of compensation and take our assets if we don't give it up. The needs to end, end quickly. Denny's sad, so it's settled, I guess. More aggressive action is needed. How much time should we give them? 48, said Lot. If by that time they still want to try it, then you have my permission to take whatever action you see fit. We can avoid the more unpleasant bits, sir, said Toscano. We do an announcement, get him off the ship, and do then do it with nobody aboard. It would be a genuinely fair or respectful. I wouldn't want anything else, Admiral, although it does depend on how military Germany responded to the warning. I know the line is drawn. I know the comment is. Well, it's a gigantic surprise, but I'm not going to complain about Brazil. It's a beautiful country, and even without fully updated passport for post lot presidents, I'll see how Brazil will end up with this playthrough. So it's a good video. Thank you. So it's can you play a spear, any path, but with the second West Russian war mod? Uh, maybe eventually. That sounds like fun. So it says, yes, you finally played Brazil. So excited you can make it a successful path. And someone wants me to play using uh, the Sony Plus mod uh, for TNO and play as Guangdong and, Sony, and Sony's Morita Chaos. So eventually. A tourist message. Law well, wanted through DC, with a thoughtful mind and straight, a patient stride, all in all. The visit has been a success. Brazil's ties with the US were strengthened without damaging its independence, and unlike his vice president's escapades across the co prosperity sphere, uh, Lot managed to avoid any significant embarrassment or catastrophes. He made a mental note that maybe he should be the only one visiting other countries in the future, and kept quadrants where he can't be seen. His musings were brought to an end as he found one of the memorial that stood out to him more than any other. One dedicated to the long deceased President Lincoln. A man who pulled a to torn up country back together. One who stood firm in the face of painful struggles. Someone who tore down a corrupt and barbaric institution. He kept his fallen president's achievements in the back of his mind as he made the journey back home. Lot didn't expect to face <clears throat> trials as disastrous as Lincoln's, but his task was daunting nonetheless. If, but if it meant he could leave behind a Brazil better than the one he found, it would all be worth it. Maybe we all dream of a, of a better tomorrow. The matters of oil. And then Nikola was meeting the board of Petrobras. Who had helped recently expand their he helped recently expand their operations. The meeting uh, was cordial, despite the relatively displeasing subject matter. Well, man like Quadros might be losing his mind what in anger with what it was being discussed. But I was thankfully made of certain stuff. So you tell me that despite the recent expansion of Petrobras operations, it's still a drop in the bucket compared to what we have to import from elsewhere. The president of Petrobras spread his hands. I'm afraid that is the case, Your Excellency. We still have to import supplies from the town sphere in the Middle East. From E and I and what you and that you have show, shows no sense of stopping for, for the foreseeable future. Twenty years at least is what we're expecting before we can wean ourselves of this. Lot was visibly displeased. Though we understood where this man was coming from and what if we continue industrializing. Chief Financial Officer answered this one. Regrettably, Your Excellency, that twenty year figure make my colleague found will only get bigger. It keep on industrializing. If we go all at the level we've gone during your time in office, sir, it'll probably be four years. If we go at the level that Senor Kubishek did with what is faster, faster, faster doctrine of industrialization, it might be a full century. Lot shook his head in displeasure. This cannot be born, gentlemen. I have to insist that you find a way to make this change as soon as possible. At this moment, a secretary walked into the room with a day's paper. Lot read it. Read it. His eyebrows went up for a moment, and he pushed his paper towards the oil executives. The conflict the headline said, Oil price destabilized by Italo-Turkish conflict. There's an impetus for you, gentlemen. Get to work. Brazil votes. The election season finally finished as a Brazilian electorate goes to vote. Campaigners and activists put down their leaflets and placards and put have arrested from the campaigning. Well, politicians never see await their election results to see whether the careers ended in tatters or they have been elected once again. Meanwhile, the media gives a running commentary and report on the results showing which politicians won and which seats and what major upsets there have been. Ambassadors and foreign agents all quickly scramble to gather what limited information there is to see the future direction of Brazil. No matter the result, the Brazilian people have voted, and the Brazilian people will get to the results, get the results they voted for. Let us hope that it was a wise choice. The votes are tallied. Hey, PSD, 23. Nice. Very good. Our line is violated. The stupid crowds have escorts, said Denny's as he ran in. Toscano says there's missile boats with swastikas escorting the trawlers now. That same hit the room hard. That means Lot said we have to pull out. There's that's it, then we can't afford a war. Quadros couldn't believe his ears. Pull out Miller, just put troops in the our waters. We want to pull out. That's an effective war, Mr. President. Not yet, it isn't. And if we take more action, it might just. Quadros is absolutely right, sir, said Denny's, but we can still have options. Toscano says his forces are on the way. We can bring a force to destroy the barrel of the motor boats and tell them to move back. We'll cause damage to the Central African station, and they know this. We'll still avoid getting shots fired, but we'll have to respond. Our integrity depends on this. You're darn right it does, Marshal Sequadros. We said we were going to respond, and that's what we'll do. We stick with the plan, sir. We'll do the boarding. Darn the consequences. They aren't going to take a challenge. But the Greek Marine, they are a group of obsolete vessels, none of the best in the German arsenal, on the edge of their range, yes, Sir Denny's. We can force them to go back with pressure. And we can stick with the plan, Sequadros. How are we going to take this? Board it? Play it safe, keeping it at arm's length. It isn't where let them go. Board it. They fired us. It's their fault. The Germans pacified. Matter of the Senate. Brazil's Congresso Nacional finds itself a house divided in the aftermath of the 1962 parliamentary elections. Though on paper, the Congresso Nacional appears to be controlled by the Vargas alliance of the PTB and the PSD. It is nowhere near as simple as that. 
As one might expect, they are front lines, fault lines, and factions enough to make elementary school uh, schoolers' playground squabbling seem like a manifestation of student unity by comparison. And the Camara dos Deputat, Deput, uh, Deputados, the lower house, Jao Goulart, formerly vice president under Juscelino Kubitschak, was able to garner support from the PTP, PSD, and PS, PSP, and other minor parties to be elected to the position of president of the chamber. But in the Senado, the largest PSD candidate, Aurora, or Auro de Mora Andrade, not known to be on good terms with Goulart, was the one that became president. Because the PTP, taking advice from Goulart, refused to countenance having him serve as president of the Senate, Auro instead relied upon cross a lot of support from the UND, or UDM, and other opposition parties. The situation, though, less than desired, was probably manageable for President Law, unless some kind of cross occurs that would require Auro and Django to collaborate, which strikes most observers as an unlikely occurrence best. Dilly noted. Jim should have stopped coming into our waters in such large numbers. We have succeeded in our objective of dramatically reducing the numbers of lobsters being illegally fished in our waters. Show the Germans, it's indeed the whole world, that Brazil and the South American juggernaut is not to be one that to be cowed. Limited options. It's not working, said just got over the radio. We have central African missile boats in the air and they're armed. Boarding operations aren't working. There have been several close near collisions with the ships, and one case where we fired warning shots. The situation is looking screwed, sir. All right, Admiral, we'll update you in a minute, said Denny's. As communication ceased, dread fell the briefing room. It was a disaster, and everyone knew it. Lot, Quadros, and Denny's all were aware of the predicament they found themselves in. Now, let's first speak. We'll say the course, he said. We're going to the board, and we will. Let tell, let's tell us to continue the plan. That's not going to be the best course of action, sir, Denny said. We're evenly matched. Going further would almost certainly lead to a shootout, and one that's not certain we would win. Cows would be unacceptable, and the diplomatic repercussions would be extreme. Our force are not prepared for this, sir. <clears throat> I gave my words to President of Brazil that we board the ships regardless of cost, and we will. Danes is right, Bark called us. It's far too risky. We need to tell the fleet to disengage. I was thinking back at the change of opinion, but you said, back with what I said, things are worse than I thought. We must pull back now before we get into war. We're going all the way in. The county. The wounded have been offloaded to uh, Fortazella and will be treated at the hospital there. With the German captives transported in Natal, Denny closed his report and looked at Lot. Lot had almost certainly ignored the last part of the report with more substantial matters on his mind, and Denny didn't think that the matters were important either when he came back down to it. So he said it wasn't worth it, not in the slightest. <laughs> there are sacrifices in war, Minister said Lot. We couldn't back down, not in the slightest. I don't think we could have done it differently. There's a number of coffins with, coffins with Brazilian flags on them over some stupid lobsters, Denny said. And dead Germans, they aren't going to like this. We just guaranteed to carry your task force near South Luis. Germania couldn't give a crap if you fed them raw chicken and a laxative, Lot responded. Nobody knows if that stupider, if the stupid screwers is even alive or he knows why he won't eat lobster or thermidor tonight. The Hans is an arrogant dude, but he's not going to start a war in the Americas, not while his government runs around with his head cut off. Denny's and Lot were still unsatisfied. Quadros was mad about things, how things ended this way too, said Denny's. Well, uh, I used a stupid strategy, and that's just how things ended up with it. Lot still wouldn't look Denny's in the eye, but all that matters is we won. No one's going to try anything like that again with how we, well Central Africa's attempt worked out, and we paid the butcher's bill. Lots of war ends, thank God. Do it again, I dare you, I dare you. We lost a couple guys, but you know, yeah. President Lattice is dominant. How's the highway looking? 30%, it's not bad, not bad at all. Let's get more political power finally. Slightly more. Not by much. The Bountiful Harvest. The last war has ended in Brazilian victory. With the competition now gone, large amounts of fish can, and lobsters can arrive on our shores once again as Brazilian fishermen are free to fish the rifle waters unchallenged. A Bountiful Harvest and a greater economic prosperity is on the way with this victory. The Republic of Brazil is one step closer to bringing about Odem e Progresso in its own lands. Ooh, this weekly stability. Bountiful Harvest. Nice. Uh, poverty begins to rapidly improve. What's not to love? A report on spiders. Their Santa looked up in the document he was reviewing and saw Secretary Esther. He gestured for her to come in, but she interjected. I have an update for you regarding the raid you'd ordered on that organization earlier. A member of the Guanabara police is outside and wishes to speak with you regarding this matter. Their Santa immediately got out of his chair with the excitement of a young boy on Christmas. Of course, Esther, please let the good gentleman be in immediately. Let's hear a rush to get his two glasses from his cabinet, a bottle of imported American whiskey. Just as he set down the glasses, Officer Fontes came into the officer's office and reached out to Lacerda for a firm handshake. Governor, good to see you. My name is Sergeant Fontes of the Guanabara Police, and I just want to give you a quick update on the raid that you had ordered earlier on that illegal organization. Now, Lacerda made sure to pour over the good sergeant. A full glass of the whiskey and poured himself one as well. Yes, yes, I've, the ringleader's all been apprehended. Let's hear a question while offering one of the glasses to Fontes. Fontes uh, politely raised a hand to refuse and continued, Well, Governor, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear that we were apprehended and charged 12 individuals with meeting illegally and discussing extreme ideologies. I've spoken to the public attorney regarding this law. I think they'll be going to be going to be in prison for a noticeable amount of time. He'll be throwing the book at these Nazi scum, of course. The sir cannot believe his ears. This was everything you'd asked for more. For more. 
And the public, Sergeant, how have they been reacting to this great success? At once I was talking to this college slightly before responding. Well, <clears throat> Governor, to be honest, we've all been busy following the lobster war. That's really been the talk of the town, the precinct, and on the streets. We didn't even prepare a press release for this raid, given how low profit we thought it was. That's not due, Sergeant. I must recommend for your precinct to release a statement on the victory we have achieved over the Nazi scourge. Quick, you must be going back to the precinct now to rectify this error, no? Fontes sheepishly stood up and slowly lost before hurriedly leaving the office. A second glass of whiskey is ample reward for the successful capture of fascist snakes, of course. But now the, uh, the bountiful harvest can be done. I must continue on with the Navis plan, finally. Plan suggested by our esteemed finance minister, the prudent Sancredo Navis, is as follows. Raise taxes, fees, and otherwise get a hold of money in order to secure or service our debt, which, thanks to the ambitious spending programs of President Lott's predecessor going on, among other things, is at a crisis level. Before we give any thought to promoting economic growth, only when this debt has less of a stranglehold on us can we get to work on various investment and economic stimulus schemes which will grow the economy. Those in turn further reduce our debt and free us to do whatever we want with our finances. Oh, protag protagendo nosas requisas. Men lots said at the head of the table. In my career, there have been very few times like this one tonight, and it certainly is one you will feel the same way about as well. The officers of the Brazilian 3rd Naval District Command had gathered in the banquet room of the Palacio de Alvalada. They were all excited to be there after a long period at sea, facing down the German Navy. Admiral Toscano and Marshal Denny's were there, and were both happy as well. Even Quadros was happy part of the festivities, and he had a right to by all means. Truth be told, I thought I would never have a moment like this one when I was in Britain. A lot of us entertained the notion we could turn the tide again and force the Germans back. That we could save a country with our efforts and our efforts alone, but that didn't happen, as the United States ever since. <clears throat> Some have thought this would mean the end of the free world. That the forces of hate and tyranny could always humiliate and abuse the democratic nations. And nobody expected that one day any free nation, let alone one in South America, could stand and hold its own. <clears throat> Certainly few in this country did, but a pride and honor to man, we set a line. By your work and by your work alone, that line helped. Brazil is now the only nation in the history of the 20th century to win an unequivocal victory over fascism. No, not even the Americans, not the British or French, French empires. I've done what you've done these past few weeks, and now we can take pride in that world's defeat of the German Navy since Graf Spee was scuttled. Gentlemen, we drew a line, and the Germans cannot cross it. As you enjoy the wonderful menu of lobster-based meals specially prepared for the occasion from the very same shellfish you have protected at sea, we keep in mind this meal is possible because you kept the new world secure from the disasters and downfall of the old. <coughs> Law raised his glass, and the entire table followed. Para a Marenha do Brasil. Cool. Form an agricultural commission. Raise some taxes. Uh, inflation decreased by 2%. Interest will go up. Control profit transfer. Deploy him. Mm, I get in reform. It's not bad. Mm. Hold the vote. Well, maybe it's raise some taxes. What are the major planks of Navis's economic renewal plans? Raising the taxes. We need the tax in order to deal with that debt crisis and deficit, and tax is the first and simplest path many paths will have to take. Currently, we'll raise taxes on the middle and upper classes, but not on the poor. Never mind that, that raising taxes on poor people is a moral uh, first class vote loser. Vargas' any angry criticisms for stabbing his children in the back like that will create equal or create enough political chaos to even make a quadrus rampage seem calm and peaceful by comparison. The issue of Wilson. Wilson Liet Passos, a congressman of Carlos Glacera's UDN, had recently won re-election for the seat, but the governor of Guanabara, far from being happy about a party member winning as he might have been for virtually anyone else, was incandescent with rage and displeasure. So much so, in fact, that one might say that Lacerda might have even preferred Getulio Vargas himself to win the seat, though it would be a colossal blunder to actually claim it to Lacerda's face. Why one that might say that? Because at least Vargas, unlike Wilson, wasn't a fascist. Everyone from Enrique Lot to the denizens of Guanabara knew that Lacerda hated fascism. Though the Lacerda had managed to calm himself down about the matter, his anger that day was reignited by a recent news flash from one of Wilson's recent speech engagements. Why are you telling me that the good for nothing German loving uh, Nazi aping a hole Wilson wants to have his closer ties with Germany? And he pro publicly said so? I'm afraid so, sir. Was even a slight hint of irony or sarcasm in his voice? None at all, sir. For stupid sakes, that Hitler loving idiot will make us all slaves, those eagle added, bigoted blonde bastards if we don't contain him. I should go until the party leaders of the piece of human trash have better be dealt with before it gets too much influence so they don't want me to come and deal with them and them too. Yes, sir, I'll inform them. As the secretary left, Lacerda drank some whiskey to calm himself and shook his head. Why the heck would anyone find something to admire in that horse crap? The loyalty is okay. Somewhat loyal. Neptism. We need to lower neptism. Hardliners. Uh, neptism decreases slightly. I'd rather more loyalty than anything else right now, though. Neptism rises. Military loyalty rises. But Constitution's influence rises. Huh. More loyalty is always good for us, though. So. Order a thorough audit now. Yeah, we're doing okay. <coughs> a 
but happy, finally, 1963, my friends. It only took an hour and a half to get over here. Uh, control po profit transfer. Companies of wealthy people and other sort of types that form part of the 1% tra tend to transfer money all over the place like balls in a tilted pinball machine. At the moment, our government is not gaining anything from this. If we impose regulations and taxes, we'll secure a lucrative new source of taxable wealth for the Brazilian bottom line, sure. It'll anger these groups, but that's the price worth paying for the welfare of the Republic and its people. I realize the rightfulness, or rightness of this policy in due time, but day in Guan Guanabara. Oof. I was half past in a favela do Pazamado when the court officer arrived at the local community center. Despite the pompous name, it was nothing more than a large sh shack which the residents used for gatherings. The nervous man approached Mr. Narciso, pulling from his jacket a document with a title and fiction notice. I'm sorry, it's signed by Governor Lacerda. In ten days, he wants the favela cleared out for the construction of a new tunnel. It's higher order. Mr. Narciso sighed. It's not my problem, my friend. Tomorrow in the morning, I'll leave my shack. Don't want to see your tractors running over. And besides, it won't be hard for me to find a place to live. I can fit in everything I own inside my pockets. But out of those people, what about them? N Narciso looked around at the massive families coming and going through the narrow slips, or alleyways. Well, the court officer said after a small hesitation, the governor's building a new neighborhood for them. With support from the Americans, we'll put them on buses and take them to their new houses. It's in Bangu, beyond the factory. Darn, said Narciso, disappointed. In Bangu? Bang, bang, Bangu, beyond the factory? Guys, it's time to leave. Hey, we're ready to That's good. Hey, we're fair. We can all get a prime. Wow. Yep. Our debt to GDP ratio is below real GDP growth. Good. Debt to GDP ratio is below 75% of our debt ceiling, and we're peace. Oh, that's awesome, actually. The agitator issue. So the interest went down. Oh, it was a very hot night of the uh, Planalto Palace. President Lotto called an emergency meeting with some of the members of this cabinet. We just received a report from the Etamarte of Brazil's foreign ministry. Sitting in Uruguay's decision to receive the perfidious agitator and troublemaker Che Guerva in their own borders, and what was even more concerning were statements promoting and supporting, supporting revolutionary action in the region and overthrow of all existing South American governments, and more importantly, he would lead their uprising to seech, achieve such objectives. The man should have been put to a wall and shot, General Denny's in a very angry tone said. The fact that the Argentinians and Uruguayans don't do that immediately when they, each of them had in their hands is just another testament to their natural idiocy and incompetence, heck. Maybe we should send them in a small task force and do what we, the cowardly kind of idiots didn't have the balls to do. Paraguay. Anyway, huh? uh, no, answered vehemently. We're not violating the sovereignty of a friendly neighbor. That is out of the question for now. What if, timidly, uh, and with the trembling hand suggesting quadros, what if we could ask him to come here and give him a little medal? After all, in the end, he's just a good South American patriot who loves his continent and is fighting for his fatherland in his own particular way, giving him some recognition might just appease him. Are you matched at everyone else in the room in unison? Probably. I would not shake hands with the known terrorist and international criminal said lot. You know what, Denny's answer would rather know. I would just remind him of the video of, his num of the numbers we have in the Third Army, and that, that should teach him how to toe the line, as it always has been. No, saber rattling is not the answer, although, says, the president referred to his foreign minister, tell the Uruguayan government that we urged him in the name of regional security to expel Guerra from the territory at once, but they do not so, the nature of the relationship between our nations will irrevocably change. I think they shall heed our warning for letting Guerra, Guerra, uh, Guevara enter the country as an idiotic decision, but no government is stupid enough to let that man stay in the country. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. Well, I'm going to spend a little more. Because actually, this does increase our growth. Doing the mechanized stuff here. So, 0. 0.577. 0. 0.5. Oh, it went down. Oh, crap. Well, they did affect growth. Weird, but okay. Of course, we just, just raised taxes, too, so. Raise interest rates. Raising interest rates is also a good idea during the times of economic malaise. It's a measure that has been taken by countless international national banks. <clears throat> oh, my bad. Um, yeah, my bad. <laughs> uh, throughout the world, since the idea of a state-controlled bank became commonplace, doing this will put more money in the Brazilian worker's pocket in the long run by directly tackling inflation and lowering it. Well, this may have a short-term effect on our economic growth, further investment in industrialization, and mechanization under the advice of Neves. We'll show that in the long run, economic growth is not hampered. Thus, with both inflation being lowered and long-term long-run economic growth continued, this will turn benefit the Brazilian economy in the long run. Nice. Inflation will decrease by two percent, which means two percent more growth almost. Not quite, but somewhat. The real work begins. The lead drifted in and out of consciousness, catching bits of conversation activities that drifted past him. Modern curses, a loud belt of me uh, laughter, metal and metal grinding, lean twos, fabric walls provided no shelter from the sounds of daily activity. A shredder desperately catch some sleep from the upcoming ship. It was on the night crew of this section of the highway, tasked with clearing debris and paving where the budget allowed. The fund's been a lot bare recently as the poor dudes up north finally started construction. At least he had to only pave over the savannah down here. Oh crap, that's not good. Lee was falling, falling back asleep when a sudden jolt shocked him awake. Falling out of his hammock without a shout, with a shout. He scrambled back to his feet upon seeing the source of his rude awakening. The town of muscle and ill-fitting clothes that served as his crew boss. 
Manuel glared down at Lee, his scarred hand still wrapped around the strings connecting Lee's hammock to the lean to poles. Bad news, suddenly just took one of her dozers, meaning everyone gets to start to work two hours earlier. I've already heard every other screw up in camp complaining about it, so do yourself a favor and get ready and shut it. With that, he stomped off down the line, shaking awake the other members of the night crew. Lee sighed, started pulling out his gear. Wasn't right to make another anchor. To make an anchor, we watch man work while the sun was still up. Not right at all. Do I even get paid overtime? Well, that sucks. We're over a third done. But once we get done, it should be it should reward us with quite a bit of wealth. Ben Vinda. Uh, Sophie Walter, uh, under the Gua uh, Guararapa's airport for her vacation in Brazil, she breathed a sigh of relief. Back home in Hamburg, she had taken a, a look over her shoulder in fear ever since she realized she liked women rather than a more intimate way than most people did. And the kind of way that was more than enough justification for Himmler's lot or the S. Sipo, for that matter, to come into the dark night and take you away to be re educated as a degeneration of the true Aryan woman. Sophie kept uh, looking over her shoulder until she could bear it no more. At last, she enlisted the help of some trustworthy connections, some of who were apparently connected to the more radically liberal members of the, her generation. Let's combine with the support of some of her more open minded family members who were enough for her to scrounge together enough Reichsmarks to go up someplace more welcoming. She could took enough with her where she would be able to establish herself, but not so much as to attract police attention. As Sophie stood in the inspection line, she grew more and more nervous. She heard that Brazil was remarkably welcoming to refugees from Germany, but she kept second guessing her decision. When she finally made it to the front of the line, she handed her passport and papers over to the officer and said a Portuguese sentence she had rehearsed over and over again Sir, I am a refugee fleeing from Germany. The officer that Till looked at her for a while, sighed, stamped her documents, and returned them to her. Then he motioned for her to continue into the airport. Sophie nodded and moved on. As Sophie Volta headed away, she heard the same practice sentence again that the other officer gave to every single Brazilian and immigrant that passed by him. Unlike most others, however, those words lifted her heart as nothing else had in years. Benvinda ao Brazil. 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 That was raising rates. It's a tense relationship. But we're going to raise lo loyalty. Because I'm sure we're going to need it eventually. Slightly. Not much. About 5% more money. Money. R, 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 R. Cool. Well, not bad. Helps out here, I guess, a little bit more. Not much more money, though. Uh, inflation decrease. Growth will decrease. Oh my god. And that. Deflationary policy. We just gotta get rid of uh, so much inflation. Inflation is something that has been deviled our nation for the longest time and stored to Brazilian pocketbooks at all levels of society. From the poorest favela resident to the wealthiest denizen of Jardins in Sao Paulo. There's no pack spare in this country that has not been at least somewhat inconvenienced, if not outright ruined, by the vicissitudes of inflation. Decisive action must be taken in order to reduce its further effects on our people. Though Navis is not to focus on this, the people have coped and will cope, and other things will need to be handled. I also make sure decisive action is taken to reduce the problem. Which is honestly not terrible to do just because inflation destroys a lot of what we have. It destroys factory output and construction speed and everything like that, so the street cleaners. It wasn't even 8 in the morning. Samuel Va Wiener. Uh, was already regretting not leaving a suit in the car before going down the street on the damp Guangdu River Forest, hours away from Zero Copacabana. He also regretted going there himself rather than sending one of the many reporters working for him. But uh, Lee was just too juicy to let slip away. Look at this. The man called his house early in the morning, claiming to be the sole survivor of a group of homeless men that was gathered to be rehoused by a government program. Uh, but instead of being taken to a shelter, they were conducted to a clearing in the woods and executed by policemen. After escaping his would be executioners at night, all night, the survivor called from a public phone asking for a meeting with a famous journalist. Now, with mud on his heart or soul shoes, Samuel followed the man, uh, called Julio to the place where the supposed execution was to have happened. As we're getting closer, even the tropical forest couldn't contain the stench and the screeching of the vultures. Maybe Samuel hadn't wasted his morning after all. Oh, okay, very well. Um, four bodies, all with their hands tied and gunshot wounds to their heads, lay a clearing. Uh, Samuel wished he had brought a better camera as he listened to Julio's description of the killings. His eyes bugged out as Julio talked about how one of the murders called an inspector by the others. Uh, torture the victims in front of those present like he was teaching his fellow jackals torture techniques. It was like they had hit a gold mine. They were no, so focused on the scene that they did not even notice a group of three armed men approaching them. Citizens, I'm Inspector Ma Mario Mariscott of the Civil Police. You are tampering with the crime scene. Now move away or I'll have to arrest you. Julio froze in his place, shaking in terror of the inspector whose hand rested on his gun. Sam so looked at them and smirked. He knew that the scene would have ended in a much different way had he not been there. A big story. Just maybe. Maybe just maybe. Somewhat loyal. For now. And it went up just a little bit. Not by much, though. <clears throat> Deflationary policies, please. Hey, more production is nice. So now, oh, the growth is not bad. Um, we're still at 3%, which is good. And this actually should help us out a little more. 
Wow, we're only at the city crisis right now? Jesus. Uh, get more cities. We want to build Brazil. We're building Brazil, my friends. You, me, and building Brazil. Continued industrialization. Yes. Industrialization is the future of a Brazilian economy, accordingly. If we want our economy to grow, our nation to modernize, and its people's welfare to improve, we must keep the process of industrializing the country continuing at full speed. Such as factories, refineries, and other sort of modern industrial facilities will be built under the government's aegis. Do this will impede our progress on the re reduction of inflation. But if we manage to keep everything under rational management, we should at least <clears throat> be able to prevent uh, inflation from increasing any further. And a population that benefits from improving an industry will be more resilient against the problems caused by inflation, so it's all worth it. Nice. An intolerable mistake. Well, let's see this one first. Yeah, how's this going? Requisition assets. Partially industrialized, widely developed. Uh, Uh, breaking news out of Guanabar Province today as Governor Carlos Lacerda dismissed the Secretary of Security just an hour ago. So as close with the Governor reported is increasing anger with the Secretary regarding the death of multiple homeless men who have washed up on the beach in Rio with seemingly little explanation. Detectives are currently treating the case as a homicide, although there's no suspects or peoples of interest in custody currently. The Secretary's inability to solve the particular cases around Lacerda's ire, though no one truly knows why. It's not a common for murders but going solved in Brazil's largest city, but it appears as if Governor Lacerda is focused on improving the murder clearance rate. When asked by the sudden firing of the Secretary of uh, Security, the Senator refused to comment on the firing but mentioned that the faithful servants of Guanabara will ensure that justice is brought to her fellow countrymen and emphasize that Guanabara is for all the brothers and sisters, or poor or rich. Paperwork on behalf of the Governor's Office today was filed detailing the creation of an independent investigation committee to assess the detectives in solving this particular murder, but political analysis is expected to stick around to try and improve Rio's abysmal murder clearance rate and train both patrol officers and detectives to cut down on violent crimes. Governor Lacerda has been praised by many for his efforts to improve Rio's plumbing systems, ensuring that all systems have access to clean water. He's significantly more controversial regarding his decisions on public housing and clearing spaces for projects, evicting thousands of residents. Regardless, a few critics have uh, criticized Lacerda's recent efforts regarding violent crime in the city, but some were skeptical about its success. Only time will tell whether or not Governor Lacerda's efforts to bridge the gap between Rio's poor and rich will yield any fruit. If any tips or information regarding the death of the homeless man, let's call out Guanabara Police. There is a 800 or 8,000 Cruzeiro reward for any information. Those who pray on the week are the greatest cowards, father and daughter. It was a pleasant day in the uh, Palacio del Planalto. And in Enrique Lot was pleased that his everybody was a good day. To meet with someone who was neither an opponent of his nor someone who could just mess up. Or no or indeed somebody who out to see what they could get from him. Quite the contrary, actually. Um, uh, it was his beloved daughter Edna, who just been elected to the Camera dos Deputados as a member of the PTV. Lot sometimes <clears throat> joke quietly with his, about his, with his daughter about the fact that she has chosen a different party to, uh, from him, but since it was Jingo's lot, he was completely fine with the situation. How are things going, Edna? Why did it slower? What the heck? Uh, oh, pretty good, Dad. I've been getting used to the, the way things work over the Deputados. Jingo's been showing me the ropes, and I've been in touch with Tancredo here and there. Really glad to hear that. Uh, you can trust the two of them. What's your newest project, and by the way, I can see if I can help out with that. I was looking at the strength and protections for women in the urban workforce. I'm sure you've heard about all those workplace accidents in Sao Paulo and Rio and whatnot. Their men get what they need, but women aren't given the job as much. Uh, that's a good idea, quite good. I want to get hold of Leonel Brizola to help you with that, especially seeing as how that Jack uh, Daw and Rio. Well, I can screech at the top as long as the prospect. Uh, Senor Brizola, that's a good idea. I forgot about him. Thanks, Dad. As the conversation continued along less urgent matters, a lot relaxed. I was proud of his daughter already. God willing, she would give him yet more reason to be proud of uh, as the years wore on. Edna has a lot of potential, I dare say. Lots of potential. Some of crop not good. Neptism is low, which is good. We could actually probably reduce it even further, though. Unchecked corruption, which is not good. I hate. Rapid industrialization, yeah. Industrializes the interior. Repairing Kubishek's road system. Ooh, monthly growth industry. Industry has a south. Are we here to balance stuff? Who cares? We won't growth. Industrial has a south. The southern regions of a country close to the Argentine and Oriental borders have a significant infrastructure network that is not currently sufficiently leveraged. According to Senor Navas, has directives to take action to improve the industry in these areas as well as in the interior. This directive is a no-brainer for us. If we industrialize in the south, it's far easier to put it to use quickly. Because of the factors in what you have, we'll start off connected to decent roads and therefore we'll be able to send and receive goods almost immediately. The dock worker strike. The reef on Lot's desk. 
painted a bleak picture for the dock workers. Each man received a monthly payment stack of Cruzeiro banknotes thinner than their upbraided boot soles. Nearly every day at work was punctuated by a disabling accident, and the new superior supervisors were really there to see it. It's depressing, isn't it, Mr. President? Uh, Quadro said, breathing out blue smoke, if I'd strike two. I'd go down there and if I could, as well, the only difference between me and them would be a difference that I want to be there. Well, I pushed the papers to the edge of his desk, and I meant to infer that it, wasn't go it won't go on for very long. Jean-Yo, we could cut it short if we had sent in the police. I'm saying it's become normal. These workers have been putting up with it for years. They probably can't afford to miss the pay, so we should take the time to find out what pushed them too far and fix it. <coughs> well, I glanced at Danny, the AG Marshal, and just called me the old military accomplice. The owners don't want police because they think they panic at the shoulder holders, but we have no reason to get involved either, Mr. President. If the negotiations go poorly, the followers, that's on you. Please keep in mind that's a squabble between employees and employers. Not our problem unless we make it our problem. Quadros gli glided across the office to loom over Denny's, who fit neatly within the shadow. Defense, then, that's your field. How will we make ships if there's no one there to build them? That sounds like our business. You should be on my side, Denny's. You might have a stake in this farce. That's enough from both of you, Lot said. I'll decide shortly. For now, you're dismissed. Denny's and Quadros both hurried out of the office. Denny's slid so far as he could and left the president on his desk, looking on the deep thought of the calm waters of Lago Paranoa. Soldiers fight on certain battles all the time, but never by choice. Comes can handle themselves. Workers suffer. Industry suffers. Brazil suffers. And our man fights this country's battles, and I'll meet with these strikers. Do the best we can for him. Oh, we must be observers. We still have a cup of coffee or two. Not much, but enough to keep us slightly satisfied. Oh, we're a partner. So. Not as much growth. But death is better. Inflation has been drastically reduced. Um, looks like the debt to GDP ratio is doing better as well. Negotiating with the dock workers. The air in the room was dense with cigar smoke. And perspiration, and a lot finally understood how the dock workers felt stuffed in the hull of the ship. Perhaps that was part of their strategy. 20 men on either side of them. The, uh, the dispute sat around a sticky table, which occupied most of the room, and the president was cramped into a fat chair at the same. The dock workers chewed tobacco and talked among themselves a bit before a gaunt man emerged from the number and hushed them out. The strike leader. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the president for coming, especially given the opposition he must have experienced before the, he took the long journey here. A lot of nights, his men around the table popped the cigars, and the room was filled with smoke. Well, we have every reason to listen to each other now, Mr. President. I'll be blunt. We prefer to be heard us over our bosses. We want a 10% raise to our pensions and a 6% raise to our minimum wage. If we agree on this, the strike will stop by tomorrow morning. I did not let this face betray his doubt. Those numbers threaten his government's coffers, but they might not be as costly as the fury of the oligarchs simultaneously. It was unsure how long the strike could drag on, how much of the action would cost him, how much it would cost the dock workers, like rolling dice, but if he haggled ha skillfully, he might be able to contain his expenses, or perhaps luck could win this game by not playing. That's a feeling he could not evade or respect. Behind these men with the callous towns were families who depended on them. The strike was not selfish or risk free, and he could send them all home to happy families if he opened his wallet. I'll see you retreat from this anytime soon, and I wouldn't have any other way. I'll meet your demands. Ten, six percent, that's far too steep. Those numbers will come to come down before I can agree to anything. You took me any cheap cigars for this? The president will not be swayed by the high numbers and pleading goodbye. We'll go to the middle route. It's just, it's a, that's a lot. Driving hard bargain. I understand how difficult your work is, but mine requires I make some difficult decisions. You're asking for too much, and I can't agree to anything unless those numbers come down. Strike leader's uh, fingers wrapped against the table. He traded whispers with the other workers before he spoke. Maybe you do understand, Mr. President, but maybe you don't. You're a soldier. I don't know if you've ever been in a battle, but the feeling you get in your chest after being flung around by shells while some of these guys live all the time. Some of the men here are pushing into their 50s and walk like their backs been kicked in for years. Because that's how it's been. With all due respect, finding a battle and carrying luggage are two different, very different things. I know soldiers without legs who wish they could walk like you. Some of you do, but they can't. I met the percussive. Demiral of the dock workers, a strike leader's face twisted into a scowl and the sweat on his forehead falling into deep creases. Mr. President, the smoke we are breathing right now is like fresh morning air next to the crap from the engines of our boss's stick is near. The closest thing to do, the closest thing to it, is a soldier sucking up mustard gas and at least they've got the pension. It's that or the wage, Mr. President, take it or leave it. Behind a severe expression, Lot chastised himself. He wondered if it would be a better decision to send Quadros to negotiate or have spent the day planning the Trans Amazonian Highway with a cool air of Lago uh, Paranoa. Regardless of that, these dock workers won't go empty handed. I'm out. Porting is back working work. The least I can do is make sure you can afford a comfy chair when you retire, you have your pension. How about a wage increase? You got a deal. Because, you know what? If you, they can give them all a pension, but that doesn't help them immediately. Give them a wage, and they can contribute to their pension if they want to. And they can, or they don't have to, and they can give it to something else. That's my reasoning there. Give them the immediate money now, and they can do whatever they want with it. Agree to raising the minimum wage. The strike leader nearly jumped halfway along the table to seal their agreement. He and Lot shook hands and opened the door to heavy, humid air. The dock workers, satisfied with the higher wage, eyed the president through the beers that he left. More reports, more letters, more refusing to neglect profanity from the less serotipitous members of Brazil's business community. Locke considered throwing them out of the window, but the possibility of an over-ambitious attempt to discover them kept his hand on his temple. Oh crap, the increase of inflation. God dang it. Despite his frustrations of the dock workers striking, at least Locke thought that he knew, they, knew, he, they knew how to be satisfied. These suits complaining over the lost profits would hardly spare on thanks if he bludgeoned them with a pillowcase full of coins. Locke solved the problem. The dock workers were back at work and the businessmen were no longer bleeding money, and Locke did not have to pay a cent. Maybe we should go into business.
Oh, that really hurt us. God dang it. What can you do? Another strike. Lots over the maps with critical eyes. He was overjoyed to no, to no longer be suffering from the affront of the strike reports. The grass was settled, no longer distracting him from his work, and nor the tentative project, a passion project laid out in front of him. The lions bisecting the Amazon jungle will be the arteries of future Brazilian land development. 5,000 kilometers of paved highways will galvanize investment and accelerate <clears throat> exchange of nations' goods. Thousands of settlers will be freed from their internment by the jungle's uh, accesaros and see visitors arrive by the road for the first time in their history. The Amazon remain a prodigious network of paved, unpaved paths and endless canopy, but it would take no longer be the excluding the excluded other for Brazil to be brought to it. So, smiled. He skimmed a report on jewel labors holding up progress in Sierra, Sierra and placed in the bottom of the thick pile of papers. No, you get back to that later. From nowhere, this road shall make somewhere. Nice. Mechanization program. So all those massive farms with plantations scattered all over it. These grow large amounts of cash crops and sort of fruits. However, due to the lack of mechanization, they have yet to reach their full potential. Investing in the agricultural mechanization in this region will allow us to drastically increase the output from these properties. This will ameliorate local economic productivity. Improve the quality of life for people in that region and put us one step closer to achieving the president's goal of putting an end to the economic stability that has plagued Brazil for the longest time, of course. I knew we'd have this one back. You know what? We're going to do an this one. Maybe we'll do industry for all of them. Yeah, maybe we'll do that one, yeah. So we did this one. We're going to do all three of these. We'll at least get a little bit more industry going. Porto Alegre. The big screen Swiss cheese. Oh, boy. As a kid, Hector had always been fascinated by those big Swiss cheeses found at the local fine imports the grocery store. Uh, the store owners often on, had on display a big hunk of European cheese. Uh, full of big holes. His mother explained to him that these cheese-making processes generated these holes. He, she had laughed at him off when he asked if the store could charge less for cheese with more holes in them. <coughs> now, it's nostalgic for those days that did Hector's new job in the government make him. The Trans-Amazonian Highway crossed a great deal of land. Landholders, big and small, were, of course, displeased by the idea of seeing their property uh, cut into by a great highway through the Brazilian interior, of course. Not everyone had the means to complain about it in the most efficient method. In front of Hector stood a great green map of the next hundred kilometers of the highway with more holes of the ground as Swiss cheese. Oh, oh, morals in the grandest of Swiss cheeses. <clears throat> Throughout the map, there were several dark circles, ellipses, rectangles, and all sorts of other shapes that a geometrist could have a better name. All lying below the big local bigwigs, men of great means and generous hearts, Hector had received his share of the bribes to make him and others consider accommodating local interests. The highway's path would have to be slightly adjusted, of course, as well be general generate delays and initial expenses, but what could Hector do? The local magnets were attached to their lands, and the people working on the Trans-Amazonian Highway needed extra cash, of course. After all, the recent wars in Europe had made luxury foods pricier than ever. Neves plan complete. With the completion of the plan for uh, uh, Tancredo Neves for resolving their, uh, our economic malaise, economic growth has been achieved and the debt crisis has been resolved for the time being. Well, maybe not. We have successfully industrialized formerly und undeveloped regions of Brazil, mechanized farms, modernized and renewed infrastructure, security sources of income for the government, and put more money in the pockets of the ordinary Brazilians. Truly, the president was wise to put our trust in Senor Navis. Granted, the inflation has not gone down by much, but it, it will decrease over the time. Thanks to our wise economic policy, surely won't increase, right? More growth? Increases GDP by 0.6 billion. Corruption on the trans Amazonian Highway? Oh, come on. Work was never done for a president. And Lorique Lot was at least diligently reading every memo about making its way to his desk. However, there's only 24 hours in a day, and not everything can be done at once. <clears throat> in particular, corruption issues on the nation's numerous government projects was a constant source of headaches. The president's most recent acquisition was a source of a, a report on the stretch of the Trans-Amazonian Highway that had turned out more crooked than a crime boss's tax returns. It was a good thing that whatever public servant had planned the stretch of road was not in charge of teaching the nation's children about geometry. The president had seen drawings by Escher with straighter lines. A depressingly typical case, then. The local bigwigs had paid the government engineers to avoid their land. The highway had thus curved back and forth. The delays had been generated. Bribes were no doubt being spread throughout the entire chain, up, up to and including PSD, PTP cabinet members. The former general side. It was a trivial case, but not one that he had time for right now. He had moved the report to the side and called for an aid or sort of this for later. There would be enough time to ferret out these small fishes when other cases have been or completed. This Hector Gomez uh, will have to stay in court eventually. Hector. I went back up. Two and a half billion in deficit. That's not good. We're really not growing that much. A misplaced report? Uh, life as a vice president was pretty uneventful. Beyond accomplishing whatever task Lot dined to assign him, uh, Vice President Quadros spent a depressing amount of time airing through the presidential palace like a lost dog, holding a suitcase full of documents not going anywhere anytime soon. Occasionally he'd drift into <clears throat> oh boy, uh, the, the antechambers of the president's office. Lot's secretaries usually try to stop him from visiting the president himself, of course. 
Uh, I just want to help, right? The president is a hardworking man. Sir, of course, sir. Uh, the young secretary was polite, but was not very involved in the conversation. A cardboard box out of the corner of his office on the floor. What are those? asked Quadros. The secretary looked down and back at his work. Just files the president wants to look at later. He's too busy to tackle them right now. Quadros took a few files from the box. The secretary moved as if to stop him, then realized the vice president would leave him alone for a few moments. The document was yet another file on government corruption. The president dutifully, dutifully handled most cases that made their way to him, yet something about his apparent lack of enthusiasm to solve them rapidly had picked up Quadros' interest. It wasn't the first incident that the vice president had cataloged. There was probably nothing more to it, yet the whole thing made him uneasy. The vice president kneeled to replace the other's files in the box and kept the corruption report in his suitcase. The secretary barely glanced at him as Quadros left the room. Or to keep an eye on political rivals and a murder most foul. Our reports on the desk of Enrique Lott. This in and of itself was an extremely regular occurrence. Reports on all kinds of things, from doings of the foreign tyrannies to the latest Sao Paulo flap du jour, found their way to the desk of the president all day, any day, but this report was something different, something much more problematic. In the headwaters of the Arapionia River, exactly on the 11th parallel south, a firm had been collecting rubber. They were natives of the Cinta Larga, Larga Thrab, apparently. They lived in a village in the area. They had probably done so for generations, but one fine morning they heard... The head of the local rubber firm wanted to remove the villagers. He claimed to his goons that the Indians were parasites, shameful pests, and vagabonds, and resolved to exterminate them. So that is what he did. Brutally. So brutally, in fact, that even some Nazis and Japanese lot knew might have uh, blanched in horror and disgust. Well, that read through the rest of the report. Even he, a military man, well acquainted with death and destruction, could not stand and discuss what he saw about just what had been done to the natives. While one might criticize their supposedly backwards culture, though a lot doubted that it was really an unenlightened, as some might say it was, that kind of treatment was more befitting of the barbarian tyrannies beyond the seas. What horrified him was the most that it had only come out of it because one of the goons had been bait enough and so decided to run whining to a prosecutor in Cuyaba. Not resolved, so this cannot be born. Sense of action had to be taken. Some of his officials objected, but he overruled them. Political considerations were neither here nor there. Just had to be done. Deploy police to the 11th parallel and see that human filth brought to justice. Crap, with the stability? God dang it. Former Agricultural Commission. Uh, the Peasant Leagues have lost their leader now, and the rural regions of Brazil are once more in chaos. Peasant Leagues and unions, no longer restrained, are making unrestrained demands and striking in mass. Even strikes are not taking place, employee employer tensions are rising to an unsustainable level and is beginning to negatively affect the politics and economy. This cannot be borne accordingly. President Lau convened an agricultural commission in order to devise a plan of action for a gearing reform and devise a bill that will put this issue to rest once and for all. Nice. I do want to do an uh, order inspection. Yeah, or maybe both rises, which is not good. The other two rises. Well, the decreases, decreases. Eh, I don't know. This plan's complete. That's a lot of time. So, um, here we go. Oh, ah, happy August first, everybody. Very nice. Deploy Goulart. Jao Goulart is well respected among the rural labor movements. The de facto leader of the PTP is known for his ability to effectively empathize with the people. People are willing to tell him what they want and listen to his suggestions in a way that Flot or any other prominent member of the PSD, or even the PTP, cannot hope to equal. That's just what we need. We want to bring out a positive end to the challenging situation. President Lot recognizes this accordingly. We'll send Goulart to talk with these people and calm them down. Which hopefully. Decrease nepotism. Expensive. So we did the, this one here. So we're going to do this one and do this industry too. And then the next one we'll do the center one, a matter of the PSD. Then Carlo Nevis walked into the office of his friend and colleague, uh, the president of Brazil, Enrique Lott, in the Palacio del Planalto. But today was not a time for socializing or catching up with Lott, no. There were far more important things to deal with. The PSD was rolling in discontent, and something had to be done about it. As Nevis came into the room where his boss worked, he said, Political party matters, the ever present civil servants not in the room. Lott looked up and nodded with a smile on his face. Then Credo, what brings you here today? Nevis smiled back, but his face became solemn as he began to speak. His friend notices this. Henry Gates of PSD. The conservatives, Aurora, and what have you? And what have you? Now, what's the issue with them? The writers in the PSD are angry at Enrique. They think you've been too much to Goulart's and Quadros. A dark worker's crisis and a time of point. They're angry that you didn't do enough to consult with them, and that for all that, I don't like s uh, some of them. They're right. You need to do more about their opinions, Enrique. Well, Scott, I'm president, thank you. I'm doing what is best for the country. They need to have faith that I'll be able to preserve a democracy and prevent a political disaster. Nevis said, I understand that, Enrique. You know I have faith in you, but I really, really need to talk to Aurora. Um, you need to talk to Oro, Andrade, and the rest of them. You owe it to them to ensure their voices are heard. Lot made a show of listening, but there was still a stubborn look on his face. Names could tell that clearly, and it worried him. It worried him, it worried him. 16% growth? Nice! 32.6%. Victor's challenge. Victor had been a bureaucrat for almost six years now, but this posting was completely new. 
He had been a, a city man all his life, never been in the countryside once, and he'd been picked for the Agricultural Commission because they were impressed with his previous work. Your census for the district was one of the best I've ever received, the boss had said. How do you feel about getting some fresh air? And so Victor was now sent to the countryside as part of the commission to do initial findings and investigate if the land reform was needed. A simple task. But the sightseeing encounter made his head rebel. Real. Yes, electricity was slowly spreading. Yes. More people, young people could read. Yes. The richer peasants had all had old but woke up cars. Yeah, the countryside in many ways barely moved out of the last century. Mayors were so stinking rich that the insides of the houses made Rio's finest apartments look shabby. Cayados so dominated the stages or states and had eyes and ears everywhere. Nothing happened in their lands without their permission. And despite years upon years of promise, poverty and the slow grinding life remained to plague the people. As he left the last house, he had another poor peasant, who still strained herself with immense dignity to tell him of her plight. Vitor steeled himself. He was a city man. He had never been in the countryside, but these people who fed Brazil, who formed his heart, been lied to again and again, forced to cling to empty promises who were never fulfilled. The commission would ensure that the peasants would finally get their due. There's a lot to spend here, but we'll try it. Somewhat corrupt. How are we doing with the highway? Hey, 45%. Almost halfway. Yeah, once we get that, we get more political power back. We get more money back. And we're ready to invade Uruguay if we need to. Which I kind of want to. So can we please invade? For the love of God, let us please invade. Be offensive. I like offensive people. Fire is still getting better, too. It's not bad. <sighs> Land doctrine. 50% more soft attack for line infantry? Jesus, that sounds pretty good to me. Alright, so stop the lead crackdowns. Investigate the peasant leagues. Leadership of the peasant leagues, is, as it currently stands, is clear and not present danger to the Republic of Brazil. And the there's no illusions about this. Currently, they have been talking to Enrique Loth, a former colleague, and been convinced him that the decisive action must be taken to prevent these nuisances from turning into something more than that. Genio Quadros, backed by some members of the PTB, is complaining quite loudly, as is his wont, about his proposed method. He thinks he can be backing fire on us, but lots in the military believe that the benefits of putting those seditionists down far outweigh the risks, and so they'll push through this with a course of action. Deploy Goulart. Of all the angry, tired little corners of Brazil to be sent to, Goulart had always found it in himself to make him his own tired, angry little corners. Nobody really needed to work away at calming down some forgotten village, especially not when the ever regimented local police was already more than capable of quieting such insubordination. Local Goldar always found it in himself to get his hands dirty, as his colleagues would say. A civil crowd was already lined up. After all, and as soon as Goulart took a step towards the makeshift podium, consisting of a variety of crushed cardboard boxes, the crowd's jeers and insults simmered down, and when Goulart opened his mouth, they came to a complete stop. Ladies and gentlemen, do not mistake me for one of the countless aristocrats. Do not take me for a brutish street thug. Take me as you would a guest. This is all I am, after all, Goulart paused and leaned forward towards the crowd. His voice hardened, and his posture snapped into that of the great agitator himself. Those who steal your grain, those who rob you of your efforts that make life impossible, these are not guests. They are not welcome. None deserve it to have their hard work chiseled into nothing by the moron, moron artisans of greater powers. The crowd stood partly confused, angry voices dying off only to listen to who had been sent to quiet them, and stood partly with anger growing uh, back in their souls, their fists themselves. As a whole, they listened to the lone politician ahead of their protest. You have all suffered under the tight yoke of those who had ignored you, trampled you. I've seen it, even now I see it. That is why I will not rest until I sleep... I will not sleep until I have passed the bill so strong that even the lowest thief will pay his local representative to vote against it. The crowd had begun to revive their spirit before long, and before anyone knew it, they were chanting his name. Goulart looked across the latest masterpiece. It was something to behold, and he knew. All that remained was to fulfill his promises. And God help him if he didn't. Hey, more civility back here. Pen in a Gearian bill. Having taken initial action regarding the problem of the peasant leaves, it's time for the Lot government to take the final decision that will put an end to the protest paralyzing the Republic. President Lott and his government are proposing a comprehensive land reform bill that it passed will cause the largest land redistribution in Brazilian history. The proposed program will transfer land from large rural landowners to the poorest rural citizens that are best placed to put it for the families. Put it for use for the families in the nation, mind you. We will, of course, give the affected landowners compensation and allow them enough loopholes where they will not flee the country with their money. It will be difficult to pass, but if you manage to pull it off, it will be worth it. Cool. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do with Brazil. Thanks for watching. Have a great lot of rest of your day.